So I will I will start with some stuff that I I think I presented some of it before um, with this free algebra class. Uh, it will be just a nice example, and some things will will also appear. So um, first, maybe with an example of this free algebra. If you take a list as the as this m as a type to type, then this return free would be a singleton list, and fold map free would be just a fold map. There are two constraints here. One is called algebra type, which for this case would be just a monoid. So this D would be required to be a monoid. And this algebra type 0 would be an empty, empty constraint, so no constraint on A. And then this fold map 3 is just a fold map from A to, to, M on, to a monoid, and then you get a map from list of A's to D. And you can also uh, make actually nicer instances for monoids, because this one is actually free for particular monoids that are strict on the left. So, I have um, a question. So M is constrained by the algebra type and the algebra type 0. Uh, this is only to map. Uh, so that it works for any free algebra M, so like for any kind of constraint setting, so like for semi-groups, semi groups, or whatever kind of algebraic structure you want to apply. So that's why this M appears in this algebra type, type family. Uh, yeah, and, and the only, only, I think, important part for this is that there we have... Ah, this is still Duncan. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> a month ago or something? Yeah, something like Do you think they got it? <laughs> Understood it finally? <laughs> I guess on Monday they'll come and like, oh no, it's not. Like, oh, no. <laughs> we were oh, so close. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> For a second there I put the permanent marker. Oh yeah, you almost started writing, is it? Yeah, this screen might be. It says whiteboard. Okay. Maybe over time. Yeah, over time it just clicks. It's fine. Um, so important part for these two uh, type families, algebra type and algebra type zero, is to remember that we have a... Uh, Maybe you can think of another one. Yeah. Hmm. Short. No, this works. Um, that we have some smaller set of, um, no, actually a larger one. And th th this could be just all the types in, in Haskell. And then we have. Uh, our algebras that we uh, we consider. So this is this algebra algebra type of M, and this is this this basis algebra type zero of M. And in in the case of monoids, this is just all types, and these are monoids. And then. Uh, so the type zero is all types and. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and and then there are two uh, two factors in in both directions. One is that we can actually forget that we uh, we have a monoid and just 
consider the type. So this is the forgetful functor, which is usually denoted by u. And there is a, a free functor that, that generates the, the algebra, in this case, a monoid. So you take, you take a type, and you want to get a free, free algebra. Uh, so this can be monoids. Um, and actually, in Haskell, the, the right factor to consider here is not the least factor, if you want to get all the, all the monoids, but the, but the D list, the difference list. Um, there is, uh, you, you could also consider the, the list functor. So you take A and you get a list of A's. But then um, it's, it's actually, um, it satisfies this, this model, it satisfies one additional equation that is not required for D-list. Uh, so if you take undefined, Oh. Um, and then um, multiply with, with, with some list of A's, then for a list, you, you will get an undefined. And, and this, is, this is actually additional equation that is satisfies, satisfied by the, by the list factor. Uh, and you could consider like a smaller class here, just monoids with this additional law, which would take part of this. Uh, and I will not particularly distinguish that in, in, this, in this talk, actually, uh, because it's not that important. Uh, but the important part is that we have these two functors, one that forgets the structure, and the other called F that and they are emph I, emphatically not inverse inverses of each of each other. Yes. Oh. And because this this part is this Oh okay. Thank you very much. So be a man but you just cut that but we need to talk about stanach to pay. Możesz tutaj, śmiało. Nie, nie, właśnie nie mogę. Aha, to trochę w tamtą stronę, tam gdzie kosz na śmieci. <grym> to dobrze. Jak masz większe liter, to to może być nie Nie, wystarczająco dużo. Okay. Dzisiaj założyłem kontakt. Aha. Um, um, bardzo dobrze. Okay, so I, I just started with a very basic setup that we had. We consider uh, one set of types that by some reason I constrained, but it's not really important, you can consider just all the types and, and monoids. And this will be the basic example that will be running. And then we have two functors, one from, from, from list to, uh, to types, which is the forgetful functor that we forget that we have a monoid. We just take the type. And the other one that takes a, a monoid out of a uh, out of a type, so either it's a d, d list or a, or a list, and like there is a subtle difference. But Does this monoid correspond to like the writing of the algebra as expression with some somewhere cut like plus and then nothing like one plus is it in the monoid? Um, or is it that free algebras are, are only on unary or binary operations? It, it can be on arbitrary, oh. arity, a number of operations. It doesn't really matter. Um, what matters for freeness are these two, is this class. That if you can implement this class, it means you have a free algebra for, um, for some kind of setting. And, and this stuff that I will talk about today will be just about monoids, but it applies to any kind of this setup. Uh, 
So I think this is what I what I needed to to get from that part. And um, I know it would be actually slightly more general. So then we can construct two categories in this picture. We can we can we can think of uh, what are arrows here and. This is represented by, by this home type. Uh, so the, the home between A and B are just maps between A and Bs. But A and Bs are constrained by, by, by our base constraint, uh, which in the monoid is just an empty constraint. And and this is uh, this is actually a category in the sense of Haskell type system. Like you have a category class, and you could almost define an instance for that, except that there are these constraints, so you won't satisfy them. But you have uh, you can have uh, the identity identity home uh, identity map and and the Compose home, which is the composition. And one more in, uh, important part, actually, uh, for a home, like a, for a home functor, is that is a bifunctor, which means that whenever you have you have a map from uh, from A to B represented by this home AB, you can always extend it in in, in both directions. Um, so it should have the structure of a of a bifunctor, uh, or actually a profunctor, not a bifunctor, because it's a contravariant in one on one leg and covariant in the other. And and the same the same we can we can actually do on the on the top. So we can we can take uh, two algebras and consider all the uh, all the maps between those algebras. Just the constraint change here that we constrain using the algebra type. So so now A and B are constrained. So in this in this monoid setup, we say that we have a map of monoids, and the law that they have to satisfy uh, that is not expressible. Uh, and for monoids, the slow would be that uh, if you have A, uh, F, which is, uh, which is this homomorphism, then you would require that F applied to A times B is equal to F of A times F of B. And another one that F of mem T is equal to mem T. Um, so you, you only consider the, the monoid homomorphisms. And, uh, and then actually, so then we have, we have these two actually now ca categories. One is of algebras, and one, one, is, one is this alk home, and another is this home. And we can have a, a forgetful functor. Um, and yeah, I need to go back. Uh, so in this in this class, I had I have a requirement that I haven't shown you because the screen was too small, mm -hmm. or I wanted to hide it. <laughs> <laughs> that we have two actually proofs, and um, and they say something like that that uh, that whenever you you have an algebra here, which is constrained by by this algebra type then it has to be uh, it has to also satisfy this algebra type zero so this is this is the requirement for a forgetful factor to be well defined uh, yeah and this this needs to be uh, added to the class and and this is ah, this is this forget constraint uh, and the proof, the proof is not important for now. So, 
Um, yeah, and and then you can define a, uh, this forget functor from alc home to home, and you just need to use this forget twice, once on a and and the second one on b to prove that a and b satisfy the the algebra type zero constraint, and you can then create a home which requires those constraints to be uh, to be in uh, in scope. Uh, yeah. So so far so far we have two categories and the forgetful functor. Uh, uh, yeah, and. It, you have identity, alc home, and the composition. Like it's mm, nothing has changed actually in that matter. Uh, and uh, and again, alc home is a um, pro functor, so you can you can map map it. Uh, yeah, but this is actually the start of the of the story, and. Uh, And uh, and there is additional structure that is hidden here in, in this in this setting, um, and it's called um, this part of this topic is called, called adjoint functors. And and this is one of the most uh, well known examples of. Um, of adjoint functors that u and f ad, are adjoint, and uh, the property uh, it's it's really easy to write and remember, and um, in mathematics I would just write that hum of um, f of a to to a monoid m uh, is uh, is isomorphic to home from A to U of M. Um, so this home is in in this category. So we actually can write that alc home here and take f of A to M. And and this home is is in the in the lower category, so it's our home from A to U of M. Uh, and U of M is actually M. It's, it's, it hasn't changed. Uh, so there are some requirements for for such a bijection to be uh, called. An adjunction, and uh, um, yeah, we we will we'll need some some of them briefly. So one of them is that um, uh, so you you can see that you have actually two uh, two spots here when you can put types here on A here and on M and the same here on A and on, on M. And this isomorphism should respect the functoriality of those two places. So whenever you have a map from M to M prime and, and you would compose this alc home to the right, you want this isomorphism to preserve this composition. And the same with this, with this A. If you want to pre-compose with some arrow, you want, you want it to be uh, preserved, and this is called naturality. And and the functor that is on the left is called left adjoint, and the one that is on the right is called, called right adjoint. Uh, mm, there is a funny way of remembering which one is left and which one is right. The right is the rigid one, so very um, conservative, and the one on the left is free, <laughs> but it's more 
yeah. Um, okay, and then uh, let's see if we can we can get it uh, here in 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 our setup if we can actually define such a map, and uh, we want. Uh, to have it in both directions. So I think I call it uh, psi. Psi is this one, and phi is this one. Yes. Um, so um, we have this. Uh, let, let's go back to our, our um, base class on everything is based on this. And uh, one can define a map that is inverse to, to fold map, to this fold map free. So fold map free is, is kind of a fold. You, you take, uh, it takes a map from A to D, where these are this kind of algebras, like, like monoids. And then we get a map from this free algebra generated by A. Uh, to D, so this is this is folding that we can fold M of A, and actually this map should be an isomorphism between maps from A to D to M of A to D, and the inverse is is just unfold, which is take take the return and compose it with with with, with this map F. Uh, so re return wraps uh, a type inside 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 M of A, and then M of A uh, folds it back to D. So th this way you get the map from A to D, and uh, and you can use it to define this this psi homomorphism. Uh, that that's actually it. The the only thing that is more here is is the packaging that we have. So all the constraint that you get from Alcom, uh, which is that the domain and codomain of F are have this alge algebra type constraint, and then we can we can f forget about it and get the constraint on the base and this allows us to to just uh, hide unfold map free of f inside the home uh, yeah so this is this is psi and psi is given by this unfold map free and um, one small remark that if you take a textbook on category theory and open it and start reading this stuff all the proofs will go this way actually so I just like follow what my knowledge in category theory is just to like imitate what we can get uh, the question would be how do you check that instance is valid because these all proofs rely on the instance being valid yes sure and and there are uh, delos for that instance. Um, Can you check it with quick check? Uh, yes. I know you, you want to prove it in Coq, but for practical programmer, maybe quick check it. Yeah, you can. A little bit lower. Like, part of it all is is already included in the type instance, in the uh, in the type class because you need to have these two proofs that you can forget, and 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 then the other one. But you still need to know that the uh, fold map free is an isomorphism. Uh, yeah, how can you check this isomorphism? Let's come back to that later. Um, yeah, but I have some ideas. Um, because I understand that now all the proofs are valid, but we kind of get it as enlightenment that this instance is valid. Right? 
Yes, that it's... Uh, or at least isomorphism, it's, it's, re re revelation. Well, right. it's, it's, it actually applies to what, what I started at the beginning. That, yeah. uh, so I started with, a, with the co comparing a little bit the D-list and the list. And th there is a difference between the, these two monoids. Mm -hmm. the, the, the list is actually uh, strict on the left, which, is, which puts additional equation into, into it as a free uh, algebra. And then if you consider this as a, as a free uh, object, it's not a free for all monoids. It's only free for monoids that are strict on the left. So there are these type of things that you can expect. You you have to be uh, you have to check actually for which uh, types what your types are satisfying really. Maybe it's there's another constraint there that is kind of hidden, like being strict on left, right, or whatever. Um, the, the other thing is how far we can go with kind of partially incorrect proof. So, you know, that everybody uses one monad that is not a monad, strictly speaking. It's a control monad state, lazy. Yeah. <laughs> and people still use it because they as they, 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 they use the subset, which is no lazy subset, but right. So as long as you deal with strict states, the, the proofs are as good valid. But what happens if you like partially break your monad? Or here, partially break your free algebra? Then the proofs won't work anymore. So uh, it will only work for the, for the, for the part. You, uh, yeah. You can prove it. Yeah, yeah, like that's, that's there's. So like, just <laughs> throw a stone if you never, if it never happened to you. But <laughs> I, I, I think that this revelation may actually sometimes be invalid. Yeah, sure, sure. As all revelations. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um, okay. Let, uh, let's let's go back to our fine size. So now we want to have the other direction. Uh, which is from home to, to alc home, and this is actually the full full map free. Uh, but yeah, here we need to, we need to know what is what is the proof about. So let's go back and and see what what it is. Um, so proof is actually a, a type that is just a dictionary holding where it's where it's defined. Uh, that is holding the constraint C as a dict. And it also remembers the type A because um, otherwise... It doesn't has have any relation between C and A. Uh, no. Technically. No, technically not. It just needs to be he here because you need to help uh, Haskell to... Uh, Mm, unify some types on the way. But so, you, you, you use a proxy uh, if you went for the type one. Yeah, I, I, I was just about to ask the same question, but I can try to remove the parameter hmm. JCI. Yeah. It gave me an ambiguity ambigu ambigu yeah. error. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which is unfortunate. But, well, you, you can deal with that, so. So at this here, I'm okay. And so the proof says that whenever you take something of which has this algebra type zero, M of A will have the algebra type. So if you take any type, like in, in this monoid setting, then the D list of A will be a monoid. Or uh, list of A will be a monoid which is uh, strict on the left. So does it mean you can take any type and construct a monoid out of it? Or if you wrap it twice, it will be a monoid? 
if you wrap it once, it will be a monoid. Okay. And uh, oh, so th this is this is that we actually. This is something you can prove on a paper. That for f if you take a free free functor, that you it lands here. Okay, so the proof actually needs the type argument because there is a hidden parameter for which we have computed it. Yeah, it's yeah. It's just that Haskell does not know mm -hmm, how, to, mm -hmm. how to. Yeah, exactly. This. Okay. And it actually needs to know about both M and A. So the first argument could be actually alpha or T to constraint. Could it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, this at the end this algebra type zero m of a is just a constraint. Uh, yeah, so so this proof proves that if you take something here, lift lift it with with your free factor, then it's an algebra of this type here. And we can use it here to, to construct the, uh, the phi. Uh, so we start with an A. And we take a proof that M of A is a monoid or whatever. Then we take this M of A. And we take uh, this forget. So we know that M of A has a type lens here. So we're we're going back and forth, but we're going we're starting with an A, go up and down. So we, we end up with U of F of A, and we know that we landed here at the bottom. And and then we can just use fold map three of F, where this A um, maybe I can split the screen. Uh, and it will be simpler. Uh, where is fold map? Uh, so so f was, was from a to d, like it like here on the fold map. Uh, what we really need, and. And then we get a map from M of A to D as we really want, from M of A to D. But what we need to know is that this M of A satisfies, uh, satisfies the constraint um, that is a monoid. So that's why we need uh, a proof. And I'm not sure why we need to use forget at the moment. But probably we need. Um, but OK. Um, and then this, these two maps are actually inverse to each other. And this, you could. Use quick check to check. I haven't actually. Um, I just went further. Um, yeah, what would it unify without forget, right? The type would not be M M A. Would it? It's just would. I'm not sure if it, this construction would work with um, without forget because then it would not unify the the last M of A. So where is ALK? Yes, but this this ALKOM takes only algebra type constraint, no type zero. Um, so maybe it's... Yeah, but you know, we, we pattern match on ALKOM, so we don't really know what happens with the type afterwards, right? So if you think about unification in there, 
as a computation, right? As soon as you have an explicit type application, you need to, to think about the computation that happens there at the type level. So um, you, you don't pass it anywhere. You don't pass these constraints directly. You need to infer them, right? It would actually be probably easier to read ah, yes. something like Idris, right? Yeah. Where you have to be explicit about types, yes. right? Yeah. So you have holes True. to to match them. Yeah. Because if if you don't have the you know constraints, you actually pass these types somewhere close to the surface, but here yeah. probably not. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, and um, there are two very useful. There, there is another way of characterizing adjoint functors, which is very useful because it's uh, much more algebraic. And uh, you can always get two maps out of this setting that are kind of very natural to get. So every category has identities. And we have two places to plug identities here. One is one is we can take home from u of m to u of m. So he, here is identity of u of m. And then phi maps it to something from alcom f u of m to m. And this map that we get from identity as an image of identity I'll change for something better capture it capture it Identity U of M goes to um, and this is usually called co-unit uh, written by epsilon and it's a map from F U of M to M and another way of of plugging in an identity is on this side so we can take alcom F of A F of A uh, and we have map to home of A, and we can take this F to the other side, so U F of A, and we have identity F of A here, and it goes to uh, something which is called unit, and it's usually denoted by eta. Uh, I think I, I will just call them unit and co-unit. And unit. Um, so this looks like a unit, like it maps A to something, and this looks like a co-unit uh, because it, it, it takes something like F U of M and extracts the M from it. Uh, the spoiler is that this will be the return of a monad. And this is extract of a commonad. This will be a commonad, and this will be a monad. And we'll focus on this monad, actually. Uh, so we have these two maps, which is unit, uh, which is alcom of identity, and then we take a psi of it, and the co-unit which is home of identity and take phi of it. Uh, they satisfy um, some equations that are actually easy to write. Um, so if, if we take um, unit um, uh, 
if we take f of f of i and then take uh, f of units, then we end up in f u f i, and then we can take co units of f of for f of i, so it's 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 different bracketing. So we end up in F. Hmm. doesn't match. Oh no, it's it's fine because coin is from f u f of i to f of i. Okay, and this is actually an identity map uh, for any monad. And there is another one which is similar, but I need to um, make a space. <coughs> which is start by. Um, let me try. These are good. Let's try next one. Pink. Hmm. Uh, okay, and the other one, if we take um, so so unit was a map from A to U F F of A and coin it uh, from F of U of A to A. Uh, we took F of U units. And if you, we now take U of coin it, uh, it will be U F U of A to U of A. It is a U of coinit and, and we can take U of A unit uh, of U of A. Yeah, that's okay. If we take U of A, this is unit of U of A, we'll pack it into U, U of F. And then we can take a co-unit, uh, which will, will bracket this way. No, U of co-unit. Mm. Uh, and this F of U, this inner F of U, will just map into A. And this is also an identity. And these are called triangle identities. And I always come by them by just like this way. Like there's only one way to actually writing them. So it's nothing you really need to remember. Just um, yeah, types guide you. Types guide you or or the yeah, from U of A to U of A and from F of A to F of A. It's like the only way. Um And actually, this unit and co-unit, we, we know what they actually are, because uh, it's phi of home of identity and, and psi of alg of identity. So one will be the fold map, and the other will be unfold map. It's actually, uh, things get a little bit uh, packed, um, but they're easy under, underneath. 
Okay, then, um, then let's consider this composition from uh, taking f and then u. And the, the thing about it is that it's a monad with the unit, with the unit given here. And, uh, and the proof that it's a monad is actually very easy. So in, in mathematics, a monad is something that if we take m, which is equal, uh, oh, OK u composed with f, then a monad is something that has this, if you compose it with itself as a functor, then you should have a natural transformation from m to m to m. Let's write it here. So let's, let's try to find out if we can write it. So we have uf, uf, which is, which is m twice, and we have this, this things that we can use. Um, and we want to re reduce it to a single, uh, single m. And we have this uf that we want to end up, which is like at the, at the borders, and we have this fu here that we can reduce with, with our co-unit. So if we take uh, u of core unit of f, uh, so if we take a here, this will be a here. So core unit f of a is something from f u f a to f a, so this is this f u f a. And then we take the image of it under this forgetful functor u, it will map something uh, uf uf to uh, to just m, which is which is a single uf, and this is the monadic composition for for this for this monad. So we have we have a unit and we have a co-unit. Thing that I will not prove, but it's actually the the this two unit co-unit. Uh, equalities that we had here uh, just before, um, they are enough to prove that this is a monad. So the, that is an associative and that the unit is a unit of the monad, left and right. And we can write it in Haskell. Uh, so we take our m, the free monad. Uh, a is just the type. And, and we take m of a as a, mm, as the type, really. We, we take actually m of a and we forget that it's an algebra of type, of this type here at the upstairs. And, um, Okay, then, then this free, free m alg, uh, so this round trip thing, is a functor. Um, in, and we want to show that it's a functor in this, in this base category, which was, which was using hom as the, as the hom, uh, homomorphism between a and b. So if we take a hom m from a to b, we should be able to define a free mark m of a to free mark m of b. And, uh, and this is just using the type class that's, uh, that we can define fmap3, which, which works in this setting. And this fmap3 is, um, is, is just this map, that if you take a free algebra m and a map from a to b, uh, then fold map uh, with f composed with, with return free, uh, where is it 
let's try to see that. So if f is from a to b, so and then so we have a to b, and then we follow by a to m of a. So we get here a map from uh, m a to b, and then to m of b. So we plug here a map from m a to m of b. So from this fold map phi, we'll get a map from m of a to m of b. So this is what we what you want to get. A map from m of a to m of b. Um, so this might be this d list of a to d list of b or list of a to list of b. Uh, so this is a way one one gets a functor. Uh, the return for for this monad is uh, is just the unit. Um, and if you want to pack it inside home, we can actually do that without any uh, any problem. Uh, so here I just unpack unit and, and pack it again. Uh, this free mark has to be used here just because it's a, a new type wrapper. And the join for the for the monad. Uh, maybe I have it written better. Yeah, we can write it using co-unit and forget. It's just co-unit and forget. So this is the same formula. I took a co-unit and I forgot the constraints from the upstairs to downstairs. Uh, and if, if you have join and return, you can always define a bind. Like there's kind of obvious formula how to do that. Uh, and I'll skip that part. And, and now the, the really interesting part is that what are actually monads used for in mathematics is actually to describe theories like monoids or semigroups or whatever kind of equational algebraic theory you, you come up with. And it turns out that there is a way to describe this category just using the monad, this, this endofunctor of this, of this category downstairs without knowing anything about it at all. And, uh, and functors u, uh, which are right at, right at joint, are called monadic if it happens for them that this, this category upstairs can be uh, um, proven to be can be constructed in a way you will see in a second. So next thing is uh, how, to, how to reconstruct this algebra knowing only M. So this is called uh, M algebras or uh, Island, Islandberg Moore algebras. Uh, And it's actually something very simple. Uh, well, it's written here. So, class of algebras for this uh, for this free uh, free class M is just a map from M of A to A. So anything like that we call an algebra, where where M is our monad. Which, which I proved before that we have a monad. So. And morphisms, uh, uh, you can define a category of such algebras. And morphisms are just commutative squares. If you take map from A to B, it's, 
it's said to be a morphism of algebras if you take such a diagram and it and it commutes. So you take m of a to a followed by f, or you, you take an f map first, so you change a to b's underneath, and then then you have this 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 was algebra one, arg, arg one, and this was arg, arg two. Uh, so these are homomorphisms between these two algebras, from ALG1 to ALG2. Um, and it turns out that, that this category of such things is actually isomorphic, or is equivalent, strictly speaking, to, to this category of, of algebras. So for example, if you take three lists here, uh, this kind of maps with this particular category structure will be equivalent to monoids. Or if you take semi-groups, you can get semi-groups. Or semi-groups, you would end up here with a kind of non-empty list or something similar. And Okay, so let me uh, let me draw what we have. So here we have this types that satisfies algebra type zero constraint. Here we have uh, our all original algebras, algebra type. Uh, and we had a forgetful functor and a free functor. And here we also have this uh, Eisenberg more algebras. By the way, Eisenberg was a mathematician that uh, finished our university in oh. Warsaw, and he moved to US then, oh. and he spent his whole career in US, in fact. Hmm. Um, and these are just, uh, so we call F composed with U as M, and these are just maps from M of A to A. And it's also a structure over A, so we can always also forget about forget about this M of A that, that's above. So this is a, is it, is it an isomorphism or? No, this is just a, we're forgetting about something, so, 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 so now. No, I mean like, a, is F and U an isomorphism? This one, M A to A. No, I mean, if you apply U and then apply it, or the other way No, no, no. Uh, I think it was the other way around. One second. Yeah, it's, it's F followed by U. So, for example, for, for a list, if you take A, it will map A to a list of A, mm -hmm. and then forget that it's a monoid. So it will be says something uh, rather big, usually. Uh, and we have this, the same actually here, that we can have a free functor uh, from, from A up here. And it's, it's something actually very easy to write, because there is only one way to write it. So we have, only thing we have is A and a monad, M. So only thing we, we can take is M of A. And 
there, it has an algebra structure, this Eilenburg algebra structure, given by, by, the join, by the join of the monad. We won't come with anything more than that. And this is the, the free functor for this adjunction. And it, it is an adjunction. Uh, and there is one more thing that one can define, is a functor which is usually co called k and called comparison functor. Uh, and if, so it takes an algebra here and maps it to an Eilenberg Moore algebra. And I think, yeah, uh, it's, it's defined here, it's just fold free. Uh, so let's, let's see what's, what is fold free. Uh, so fold free is just a fold map free of, of identity. Uh, so, what is fold map? Uh, so, we want to plug here an identity. So, a map from D to D. If we map a map from D to D, we get a map from M of D to D. So, it's, it's a fold map. Uh, you just fold. So for a list, it's uh, if you take list uh, of A's, which are monoids, then you can uh, fold fold it to a single value, just like that. And this is this came up uh, from from algebras to Eilenburg algebras, and then. Um, precisely a, a category no, or a functor u, this, this forgetful functor is called monadic, if and only if this comparison functor is an equivalence, which is a sort of isomorphism for categories. Slightly weaker, but you can think of it as an isomorphism. So then these two categories are actually looks the same. And the interesting part uh, for that, that is maybe useful for us, is that it's three algebras and code. They encode actually two things. They encode all the grammar or operations of our algebras, and they also encode all the laws. And let's uh, see that on the on the list example because it's easy and nice. Uh, Maybe I have enough space. Hmm. There's also the wall. <laughs> well, I haven't removed the whiteboard, like the was on the whiteboard for a month. So. <laughs> <laughs> so we can write on the. No. Oh. <laughs> um, okay. So if we if we take uh, the least factor. Um, Then we want to reconstruct the algebra, the monoid structure for, for, for from, from list as a monoid. So if we take, um, if we take A, which is a monoid, no, I will need more space. Monoid A.
Ah, yes. So if we take, if we take an, uh, this M arc of, of a list, an ace, which is this M arc here, uh, and this is just a, yeah, this is just a constraint. So we take an um, M algebra, that A is an uh, algebra for the list functor. So basically we have a map from list of A's to A. Then we can reconstruct uh, a memty from um, which is taking an inverse of this k uh, that I oh, it's still there uh, free mark of list free mark of list voice. Uh -huh. Free Markov list is just list of A's. So we take the empty list and we fold over it and we get the empty thing. Um, Okay, so for uh, for for monoids we have this fold map from A's uh, monoid monoid A um, A's to A, and the thing is that if you take fold map. of an empty list, you will get the empty element. Of of this A of type A. And if you want to get a multiplication uh, out of having this fold map, you just take you just pack two elements in this list and fold over it. So you take fold map uh, AB, and this is equal to A times B. So in this, in this way, knowing this fold map and, and this free uh, algebra, you know all the operations. You know how empty looks in any, in any A, and you know, you know how to reconstruct the A's. So if I'm looking correctly, it takes a specific algebra and moves it into a general algebra. Your thing. Like you, you take a specific you instance said, of a list and then move it into a gen, general algebra. Yes, list. exactly. Yeah. So from the free, because this is the free algebra mm -hmm. for monoids, and it encodes both operations. So basically you can move from, say, lists to this general representation and then move back to something else, right? To some other specific representation, like, I don't know, maybe, so whatever. Yeah, to any other monoid. Yeah. But there's second thing, that it also encodes equations. Uh, so, lists are, what monoids have two equalities, they're associative, And they are unital. And you can also get 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 this from from list because lists are associative and unital. And then because of that, you can prove that every other monoid is also unital. That the unit is like left and right unit, and um, it's associative. And another approach you can you can uh, you can try to define the inverse of k, which is what I'm doing here for various things. 
And uh, so this this class I call Malk. So that's why it's it's this constraint Malk of of list of A and and then we can construct um, if we take Yeah, if we take just any 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 algebra, we can construct an empty inside A. This is what this map says. Uh, and the same for for map end. You can just do what I said uh, here. Just pack two elements inside a list and then fold fold over it. Uh, yeah, and the same for for semi groups and other other structures. Um, um, yeah, so this is this is uh, for algebras, and you can repeat this for monads itself, actually, or functors, uh, or go even further to do that for categories. And I don't know what's even higher kind of that's interesting. Um, yeah, but that's pretty. So 